We're back on the cutting room floor today, returning to a list that you guys love so much that we're now doing a part two. The top five scenes that were cut from horror movies because they were too scary. As many a horror veteran will tell you, no horror film leaves the editing suite unscathed. Cuts happen, whether by the hands of the director or by the higher ups who deem certain scenes too extreme or too terrifying for viewers to see. So today we're going to be listing off some of the worst of the worst. So grab a sick bag because I'm not giving you the PG cliff notes here. This list is R rated. Hard R. But don't worry, we will save you from the gory visuals. Let's jump in. In at five, the last house on the left. Now, we're not talking one specific scene here, we're talking a whole bunch to the point that Wes Craven doesn't even remember what was actually cut from the film. Released in 1972, The Last House on the Left is one of the hardest films to swallow. The plot revolves around two teenage girls who are kidnapped, taken into the woods, and tortured. The movie still resonates with viewers today, horrifying each new generation of horror movie viewers. The film was controversial to say the least and was banned in a number of different countries, including England, of course. Now, Wes Craven has previously stated that the film was much harder to watch in its very early days. He even opted to bring local theatre projectionists on board to help him decide which scenes were likely too intense for audiences and which scenes would break local decency laws. So, projectionists would take scissors and physically cut out the particular scenes that would fall into those categories. Most of the moments coming from the sexual assault scene, which, after cuts, was still unbelievably graphic and sickening to watch. Craven has stated that there was one particular scene that was so intensely painful to watch that he wished had made it into the film, stating that removing it hurt the film. Now, he has never explicitly stated which scene that was, and sadly we will never get to know, but it's safe to say that it was probably extremely disturbing to say the least. In at four, Man Bites Dog. Released in 1992, this Belgian film is a cinema verite faux documentary that centers on a group of filmmakers as they document a serial killer as he embarks on his horrific crimes. Now, the film borders on black comedy, but that does not diminish the sickening moments that occur within the film. Upon its American release, a cut was made to the film that ultimately removed a major plot point that was key in implicating the crew and viewers in the crimes of the serial killer. However, the scene has since been returned in the Criterion, and specifically shows the documentary crew aid the serial killer in a gang rape of a woman before she is disemboweled. Not only do they help, but they take part in the heinous crime. Once again, the inclusion of the scene implicates the crew and the viewers, as up until that point we were reveling in the brutality of the serial killer, watching in anticipation as to what he might do next. Without the scene, the film still works, but neglects the crew and the viewers from the deeds of the serial killer, depending on what ending you want more, that of the innocent bystander or that of the guilty onlooker, both are available to be sought out. However, the latter is difficult to swallow. You have been warned. In at three, Hostel. It's hard to believe that Eli Roth left anything out this brutal 2005 horror. I mean, we watched on as a man's Achilles tendon was sliced, a woman's eyeball was burned out, dangled, and then cut off with a pair of scissors before pus oozes out of her socket, and slightly tamed the protagonist's fingers are sliced off. What exactly could have been worse than that? Well, to backtrack for those that aren't too familiar with this horror flick, Hostel is about a group of Americans traveling across Europe who become preyed upon and ultimately kidnapped by a group of mysterious strangers. Their role? To find tourists to sell off to the highest bidder, bidders who wish to kill or torture for a price. It's entertaining yet gruesome, emotional yet bloodthirsty. So what exactly was cut from the film? Well, the film ends with the protagonist drowning a businessman who took part in the torture of the tourists and slits his throat before fleeing on a train. However, the intended ending was far more extreme. The protagonist kidnaps the businessman's daughter, presumably to torture and kill her in a manner similar to what we had previously seen in the movie. However, this ending was deemed too extreme, perhaps because it involved a child, and witnessing our protagonist turn into the violent killer he had been escaping from wasn't really what audiences wanted. Also, by this point we had already endured enough torture porn, it was best to leave the film with a tiny bit of humanity. In it too, The Devil's Rejects, the nurse scene. Released in 2005, which was apparently the year for some of the most brutal horror films, directed by Rob Zombie, this film is the sequel to his 2003 film House of a Thousand Corpses, which as we know dug its way deep into our minds because of the creepy oxygen mask wearing surgeon, Dr. Satan. Now, Devil's Rejects is arguably more tamer than its predecessor, relying on emotional torture rather than excess brutality, which is likely why this deleted scene faced the chopping block. In the deleted scene we find the twisted surgeon has been captured by authorities 
and placed in hospital, recovering from the injuries he faced earlier on in the film. Though drillless, the surgeon isn't quite done dealing out the brutality on unsuspected victims, and that's exactly what happens to poor Rosario Dawson. Bless her. After he awakens, he grabs Dawson by the throat, medical staff and the police being able to do nothing to stop it. Dawson's throat is quickly ripped out and she's left to bleed out on the floor, her white nurse's outfit now turned a nasty shade of red. Though it isn't the most extreme scene Zombie has ever filmed, it would have created a bizarre shift in a much tamer movie. And lastly in at number 1, a Serbian film. As you are all probably well aware by now, I hate talking about this film. I think it's tasteless and controversial just to be controversial, and when filmmakers rely on unnecessary gore and brutality to deliver a fright, I think it's a major cop out. But that's just me. Films are subjective, they always will be. Though I hate this film, there are plenty of other brutal torture porns that I truly love. Hostel, for example. Now, released in 2010, the Serbian horror centers on a struggling porn star who agrees to participate in an art film so he can pay off his bills and keep his family afloat. Unbeknownst to him, however, the art film was a cover for a snuff film, and he must partake in pedophilic and necrophilic acts. Now, with a film that is this controversial, what could have possibly been removed? Well, according to the BBFC, over four minutes of child rape and sexualization were cut, deeming them too explicit and intense for any sane audience member to view. Understandable. However, it seems quite the shock after they happily include the protagonist not only raping his own son but also a newborn baby. The uncut version is out there on the interwebs to be seen, but honestly, I don't know why you would ever want to. Now, many of you got upset with me in our last part for me judging those that want to watch this type of content, and though I don't agree with it, the content is made for a reason. People will watch. Humans have a morbid fascination with the macabre. It's like how most of us don't look away when we see a brutal car crash, instead craning our necks to get a better look. This fascination is embedded within the human mind, we can't help it. However, we all have our own limits, and a Serbian film is way past my limit, to the point that I can't fathom anyone wanting to watch it. Yeah, I have to understand that people do. I get it, okay? Well, there we have it. Were these deleted scenes scary enough for you? Were there any that we missed? Leave us all your thoughts and feelings in the comments down below, perhaps we can do a part three. Because let's face it, every horror movie out there was forced to cut something that was deemed too intense, believe me. If you haven't already, be sure to give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you never miss another scary vid. And until next time, see you later. Later.